All right, I've been working on this 4L80 here. And this is this is your output shaft. And there's a small bushing in there, if you can see it. If you notice, it's got a real shiny spot and then it's kind of dull. Well, this bushing is extremely tight. And it goes, the shaft goes on it and that's what it rides on. I've been trying to polish it up, which, yes, you can polish the bushing up. Just make sure to clean out all your residue. But it, uh, it doesn't want to fit. I mean, it's super tight. And, you know, it needs to, it needs to be able to rotate. And I apologize for that, the background noise, but there's not much I can do about that. That is Mother Nature. And we, uh, we needed some rain. And uh, by golly, we got some. So anyway, I've just been kind of polishing up this, this bushing here. This is just emery cloth. Try to loosen the bushing up. You know, I want it to be snug but I mean that's a little ridiculous now I tried test fitting this bushing before I pressed it in there and uh, you know it slid right on the other stub no problem but once I pressed it in in this hub man it's just tight 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 Guten tight. And the only problem I could see with that is if it if it's that tight it can't even get any fluid down in there for uh, lubrication. I mean it it does have you know grooves in it, but it's gotta be able to it's gotta be able to rotate. Because otherwise you end up galling the bushing and it'll end up spinning it, getting closer. So anyway, I'm going to keep working on this. I'll get back with you. All right, y'all. I got it to fit. A little snug going in. There we go. And it rotates. Anyway, so we're good to go there. So, man, it's like getting with it. We'll paint a little there. Very nice. All right. So these are all the components for the lower, below the center support. I mean, there's no clutches below that, well, other than this, this band here. So to put this together, Here's your output stub shaft. And of course, if it's four-wheel drive, you'll have or two-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive, the shaft will be different. There is a bearing that goes there, but it's already in the case, and I'll show you that here in a minute. This piece is going to go on next, and there's a bearing that goes here. There's a bearing that goes here. The bearing that goes there is this one here. And for some reason on the 4L80s, these bearings are like three pieces. You get your your roller set, and then you get a race on either side, and they just basically go like that. This ring, you can see it's got a little lip on it. This ring sits down in here like this. Okay? So we're going to give it a little... 
little lubrication. And then this sits in there like that. Like that. Okay. The next bearing is this one here. You look at that one, it's got three fingers on it. Same thing though, it get a, a lower race, your bearing itself, and then your upper race. It goes right down in here. Like that. Then this whole assembly, this is your lower planetary. It's gonna go over top of all that. It goes just like this. Okay, once you get there, then you'll flip it over. Then you get a snap ring that goes in here. This snap ring is a son of a buck to get into. There we go. All right, once that's in, then you could put in your sun gear sits on there like that and there's another bearing that sits on top here same thing it's got three pieces to it give that some little little love lubrication and you put your second planetary set in there don't forget to give your your bushing is a little love. Like that. That bushing in, then then comes your your input shaft. Again, give your bushings some well-deserved lubrication. And then I'll go right over the top of that. Just like that. All right, now, this section is ready to go in. In fact, you might find it easier to take this, leave this shaft off until you get it in there. Is that way you don't have to worry about grabbing that and slipping it off in the same process. All right, hopefully, I, <coughs> hopefully I can keep from uh, kicking the uh, tripod while we're doing this. Okay, down here in the bottom of the case, um, they've got a. Um, they call it a um, um, a Sonex. I can't get the rest of the the shims out of there. There's some shims down here in the bottom. There we go. But there's these two, the shims that they give you with it, and they give you a needle bearing, which replaces the thrust washer. <clears throat> it replaces this thrust washer. It's supposed to be a pretty good upgrade. I've not done one yet, but we're going to on this one. So if you notice on that bushing down there, it's stepped. There, I'll zoom you in. There you go. You can see how it's stepped down there. That's so the bu the bushing doesn't walk out, and then these shims will go right on top. They'll go down first. And then your bearing, it's two-sided. The uh, black stripe goes down. Put that around your, your shaft down there. The next thing is your, all right. So the easiest way to do this is to get this band in there first. 
because that way you can get it in there because that band is an extremely tight fit so put your band in first make sure that it gets on the two anchor pins down there in the corner all right all right y'all what I may not have shown you is I put this snap ring in down there and it basically if you look at it it sits below below all those grooves and it lays right on top of it and the opening has to be at nine o'clock all right that is what they call the um, center support spacer spacer all right also what i did on the center support is i took and i put two dots there that lo lines up with this hole here and i put another dot right there lines up with my cooler return hole that way so when i'm dropping this thing in i can see where exactly everything is in relation to the case so we're going to put this assembly together here and we're going to drop the whole assembly in the case as a unit they actually make a tool that is supposed to go around this shaft right here and holds everything together with a little knob on the top that you can hang on to it it's real difficult to do it without it but we're gonna have to because we don't have it here and I kinda doubt we've got it at work either so anyway um, gotta find the bearing that goes here and then we'll put everything together all right, y'all, very carefully, I got that set down in there. Take off this other glove here. And if you notice, it is set down below the groove there, like it's supposed to. My one dot is there at 9 o'clock, and my other dot, two dots, is right there at six o'clock and if we look through the the hole let's see where I'm looking here all right that hole right there you can see that's where the bolt goes pull that back back out a little bit you can see it a little better that way there we go all right this hole right here that's for your center support bolt right there Now that might have moved a little bit. Yeah, it did. There, it's a little better in line. So, now we need to get the snap ring in. If the snap ring goes in like it's supposed to, it will also be at 9 o'clock over here, the opening for it. And that takes the beveled snap ring. If you look at it real close, see how it's beveled on that one side? That goes up. 
All right, y'all, here's a dilemma. Well, it's not really a dilemma. But as you can see, I got the snap ring down in there, and it it's uh, not going in the groove. Which means that our rear end play is too tight. So what we have to do is we have to pull the assembly back out and take a shim or two out of the uh, the rear of the case and then drop everything back in and check it again so let me get this out alright so what we need to do is take those shims out down there at the bottom and we need to decrease the thickness Sonics gives you these as part of the kit. You got five and a ten thousandths, but there is absolutely no clearance there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these out and see what we come up with. You know, I kind of wonder if we've got the right snap ring. Hold that thought. Okay, y'all. Well, it looks like I had the wrong snap ring in there. Which is real easy to do because on a 4L80, it, it, I can see why they changed it and went to a different design. The 4L80 has got a ton of snap rings. And they're all about the same size. But this one is really super thin. And the one I had in there was this dude here. So that was spacing my uh, center support up too high. So we're going to put that thin one, I'm going to put this thin one back in there and put everything back together the way it was and then measure my end play. Okay, y'all. So this time I took the... Uh, the center sport and as you can see that top ring is just barely catching on the upper side of the case but if you look at the bottom part of the case it's not in the groove so that means we're still too tight on the bottom so I'm gonna take one of those shims out because it's not gonna take much but I mean it's close and the uh, the clearance on the bottom is pretty snug. It's like 0 .005 to, I think they allow you up to 0 .020, which that's a lot of clearance. I mean, I like them a little on the tighter side anyway. But uh, So we'll have to take this back out again, and uh, we'll do another measurement. So here we go. Okay, y'all, I don't know what the deal was. I had this thing apart five or six times, and it just would not sit down in there. The center support wouldn't get down far enough to where I could get the snap ring in. Um, as you can see, I've got it in there now, and it's where it's supposed to be. But the only thing I figured, and the only thing I did is I changed the output shaft. I had another output shaft, and I noticed this one had some tool marks on the end of it, and it's like mushroomed on, on a couple of the sides. It also kind of sits crooked. I don't know if this shaft is bent uh, or what happened, because I really wanted to use the Sonax bearing kit, and I've got... To me, it's about perfect lash. I mean, I'm afraid to take it apart again and put any more in there. They they say you can have it pretty tight, but uh, I'm not sure I want to do that. I mean, it it feels really good. I, I'd hate to hate to screw anything up. Not that I would, but <laughs> I think it's right where it's it needs to be 
Uh, so we're gonna leave that there. And as you can tell here, I'll, uh, man, I don't know if I've got oil on this lens. Oh, I did. Wow. Okay. Down in there, you can see that bearing. And see, so you can't really see any movement there. So, and it turns nice. That's the park pole. but it feels really good. So, that's gonna be it for assembling the lower half of the case. Um, next video, we'll start uh, putting some clutch packs together. It's pretty similar on everything else. Just need to check your packs and everything else, and then we'll uh, air check the intermediate, which the intermediate clutch, or second gear, is the one that sits on top of the center support. So we'll get that one put together and go from there. So until next time, uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Uh, share with your friends, comment. Love talking to y'all. So um, until next time, we'll see ya. God bless y'all. Take care of each other and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.